Now, for something like this, you're going to need two guns. The one you're going to use and a backup. You want something with more stopping power than a 22. You definitely don't want a silencer. You want to make a lot of noise to make the witnesses run away so they ain't going to be looking at you. But not the noise a 45 makes, because that makes too much noise, and a patrol car can hear it a few blocks away at least. Boom, what's up? My favorite carry gun, my perfect uh, carry pistol you guys may remember. I made a video a few years ago about my favorite carry pistol and uh, why I carry what I carry. And as all of us know, if you've been in the gun industry or if you carry a gun for a living, we have a tendency to be kind of like to just to change it up a lot, right? So that was two years ago. Want to give you guys an up an update on what I've been doing, what I carry, uh, why I carry what I carry, um, and just just so you guys can see, man. I mean, the truth is, I stuck with it. Uh, honestly, I'm still running the same thing. A little background for those of you who don't know me: um, I'm an executive protection agent, aka bodyguard. Uh, for individuals who aren't familiar with what we do, but um, I put teams and people around high net worth families and corporations and things like that uh, for protection. And so I carry a gun every single day. It's, you know, it's part of my profession. Um, I also have an executive protection school um, and I also uh, run live training events where I help uh, make the world a safer place by helping good people become more dangerous. And my name is Byron Rogers. I have a few podcasts in the space and, and, and different things like that. I do some instructing. Uh, so, you know, carrying a firearm is, is, is a daily thing for me. It's a way of life for me. One of the slogans of one of my brands is protection's more than just a job. It really is a lifestyle. So this is why I make these videos and create all this free content. So check it out. What am I carrying these days? Boom, CZ, P10C, right? Uh, you see the little bit of an extended barrel on there. Uh, that is not threaded because I live in California and we don't get to have those ones. Only the bad guys get to do that. Uh, so we've got the CZ P10C slide here. I got my slide worked on by Norso. These guys right here, Norso, man, they do good stuff. I definitely like it. Um, I do have a crush on another company, though, to put a slide on. Um, but for now, this one is pretty stinking cool. Uh, Norso, uh, this has been some really, really good work. But we'll see how long it lasts on there. You know how it is. We always like to switch stuff up. Um, I don't have anything done inside the gun. There's nothing aftermarket inside this weapon. Uh, everything about this gun inside it is stocked. I was thinking about getting um, some polishing done just to polish all the parts inside so that it operates more smoothly and kind of you get a, a better feel and different things like that. Uh, when you're pulling the trigger, right? But to be completely honest with you guys, usually I'm running something like 800 rounds a month through this gun over the last two years. And I have absolutely loved the experience. Um, if I was gonna describe a CZ P10 to you, I would say that this gun is like a Glock, but um, a little bit nicer. So if you, uh, nothing against Glock, Glock makes I think the Glock 19 is a perfect handgun, honestly. But I think that what CZ did was they looked at what a Glock 19 is and they came up with their own way to uh, refine various details they thought would be better. And what you end up with is kind of this little middle ground where you're like, well, do I like the way Glock does it or do I like the way CZ does it? You know, so it's, it's kind of like not one's better than the other, but whichever one really works for your body and who you are and your ergonomics and the way your, your eyes work, the better. When I first fired a CZ P10, um, I instantly felt like I noticed that the gun shot very flat, that that slide wasn't clipping up as much. I wasn't getting as much flip, but I was actually running that gun really flat and I was really, really, really happy with that. Like it was noticeable and that personally, you know, just a little bit when I'm looking at a carry gun, what am I looking for personally? Um, I like that this, this uh, same things I said in the other video, but I'll elaborate a little bit more. I like a more 45 degree grip angle because what I do 
purchase that firearm when I do take that purchase. Obviously, I want to be high up in the tang, but I like to have my entire arm back behind the weapon when I'm going to fire so that it's almost exactly like I'm throwing a punch. It's almost the exact same thing. And that I feel is the most natural extension. If you have a firearm that has a more 90 degree angle here, you're going to have to uh, cant your arms a little bit more like this. Now, if you're depending on how you like to fire, that might be ideal and you want that 90 degree angle. Um, then we're getting into ergonomics and preference and training and all these different things. But for me, I like to boom, feel like I'm punching my arm out and I'm getting the most natural angle and that comes from that 45 degree angle. Another huge thing I'm looking at is, what's my bore over axis? Really fancy term for um, how high is this barrel and all of this action taking place with this upper slide, how high is it taking place above my hand, right? And excuse the beads, y'all, I like my beads, man. I, like <laughs> I used to make jewelry. Anyways, so how high above my hand is that taking place? The movement of that slide is gonna be the one thing that's gonna cause your gun to wanna flip and move around inside your hand. So the lower that is, the more um, control you'll have organically to stay on target. So when I'm looking at a gun, I'm looking at this little piece right here, saying like, how low can I go? Um, and I like to have some support so I can get high up in the tank. That's what we call this, the tank of the gun. Definitely want to feel that trigger. Uh, sorry, I'm paranoid. I will never pull a trigger without checking the barrel. I definitely want to feel that trigger and a nice crisp reset, right? Uh, you know, the less movement, the better, right? So I love the triggers, just stock on these. I've been really happy with the way this weapon has operated. And those are just some things I look at when I'm selecting a new firearm for myself. I don't want this video to get too long, so I'm not gonna go too in depth about it. Uh, some more modifications I made. I went with the CZ, uh, I went with the uh, XC1 weapon light with Surefire, because they're the homies. And because I don't need anything too tremendously bright with my mission, you know, as a CCW owner, as a CCW holder for my concealed carry uh, permit and for uh, my mission and as an executive protection agent, you know, I'm maybe clearing a house, room everything's in close if my target's out beyond you know 20 feet or something like that my mission is escape and evasion primarily um my mission is to uh mitigate mitigation stop things from happening and then also and then escape and evasion so um i'm not gonna be searching and going after things uh theoretically and ideally so that's why I didn't want to go with like the big, you know, X300 Ultras or anything like that. This has been more than enough light for anything that I've needed. Um, now, if I was like a police officer and I was out, you know, doing traffic stops and needed to shoot some serious light um, out beyond, you know, 20 feet or something like that, then yeah, those lights are fantastic. Um, let's see what else I went with here. I've got the Trigicon SRO up top. I really, really like this dot. Um, I do feel like there there is some truth to the fact that, you know, I don't know if you guys can see it in there. There is some truth to the reality that uh, because it's a circular, um, maybe if I turn it up, you'll notice it a little bit more. But because it's a circular uh, aperture, your eye does pick that up a little bit more naturally. And I think, I think there is some truth to that because my eye drops that thing when that dot drops from the top, boop, my eye picks it up really quickly every single time. Got a little branding in there. My boy Fabio uh, Spinella, we'll give him a shout out in the show notes. Definitely, if you guys want to get uh, really a lot of machining or anything done with your weapon, I would hit up Fabio first. He is a close friend and does amazing work. Also got some pretty amazing stippling done from my buddy Josh with Juliet Tango Customs. And the cool thing about the stippling is, you know, it took me years to realize how important um, having good grip when you're firing your firearm is. Uh, you know, you kind of think about all the other factors, but um, as I evolved as a shooter, I really started to learn like the grip, really your grip while you're firing has so much to do with, um, you know, where you see your sights versus where 
uh, the round actually is when it exits your chamber because your grip and the way you support the weapon is what helps you sustain the same side alignment sight picture as this explosion goes off in your hand, everything takes place and returns. Uh, when that explosion goes off, from the time that explosion goes off to the time that round exits that chamber, things can happen and grip and support actually have a lot to do with that. So I've learned to value grip a lot. And uh, my main man, Josh, really gave me what I personally feel like is the, and, and believe is the best stippling job I have seen in a very long time. So look up Juliet Tango Customs, Josh Tucker, amazing stuff. I think he's based in, uh, based in Arizona and, um, also another thing that I would also add as I, before I close, we do have the backup iron sights on here just in case the optic goes down. But with all that having been said, I have been in competitions before. I was running a Delta Point Pro. It was a first generation Delta Point. They, I think they worked out the electrical issues later on. And um, I've had, I had two of them go down on me, but it was the first gen electrical, uh, the first gen in there. So it's like, you know, since then I believe they've gotten better, but I, I broke two of them back when I was throwing a lot of rounds through these guns. And uh, I was able to reference off of the actual aperture off the frame pretty effectively hit my six round plates and it got through the, got through the, um, the string of fire multiple times. So uh, just a note, you can reference off of your aperture if you need to. Uh, but yes, make sure, if, especially if it's a, a gun for gun fighting, if you wanna have those backup sights on there, it's definitely not a bad idea. It's, 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 it's something you should definitely have. Other than that, ladies and gentlemen, this is my current Excalibur. And there's been a little bit of evolution between the last time I made this video two years ago and where we are now. This is Byron Rogers, protected by nature and by trade, reminding you guys to be peaceful, but not harmless. I'll see you on the next piece of content or out there in the field training out.